Hey, I'm Jimmy Rogers, and I'm here from geeksaresexy.net, and we're checking out the Think Geek headquarters. Now, if you haven't heard about Think Geek before, let me tell you, they sell everything that you've ever heard of that's cool. All right, today we've actually got a special exclusive interview with John Frazier, one of their buyers, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the company and some of the cool stuff that they do here. So uh, let's check it out. Almost 10 years ago, it'll be 10 years, I think, next summer, um, uh, the, the folks that had started Think Geek actually were busy uh, working in an internet service provider. They had started an internet service provider called WizardNet that was uh, pretty popular, but as, uh, as their user base grew and their costs increased, they decided to get out of that business. But they didn't have another plan yet, so they, um, at around about the same time they were going through they were going through an anniversary. They were printed up WizardNet anniversary t-shirts and they realized how cool they were and how cheap they were and they could sell them for a lot of money and make a lot of money. So they thought, well, let's make some nerdy t-shirts and they had maybe uh, two or three bookshelves full of t-shirts and those sold well and that generated a little bit more money and they made more t-shirts and bought some product and brought those in and eventually we caught the attention of the people at Slashdot. Slashdot.org uh, at that time was owned, I think, by Andover.net and Andovernet saw an e-tailer that they thought, hey, this would be a good thing to buy back in 1999, bought us up and made us who we are today, thinkgeek.com. Andovernet then eventually got bought out um, by a company called VA Linux, which is now called SourceForge. So wow. SourceForge owns Slashdot, owns ThinkGeek. Wow, that's yeah. like the most bizarre ownership thing uh, that nobody knows about. <laughs> that's really neat. Yeah, I think a lot of people know now, by now, that Slashdot and ThinkGeek are siblings. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they know the total origin story. So what goes on in a typical day for you? What do you guys um, you know, do around the office when you're just going through the process of getting everything set up and new items and all that stuff? My job title is buyer or merchant. Uh, what I do is I'll go out and troll the internet for something really, really wicked cool and talk to the manufacturer and see if I can buy a lot of it and then bring it in here and sell it on the web. I have uh, an RSS feed that I, uh, I check every day uh, that basically goes through a lot of the gadget blogs, drills through things like Gizmodo and Engadget, uh, boingboing.net, uh, any site that has a sort of a techie edge to it, see what they're talking about and see if I can divulge from there any kind of products that might be available that I can then go out and find. A typical day usually starts um, <laughs> we have a pretty flexible work schedule. Some people start, um, some people start at 8 a.m. Some people start at noon. Uh, we roll in when we can. We uh, roll out when we do. Work a lot of weekends. Work a lot of nights, especially since a lot of our business partners are overseas. Um, but uh, my first thing to do is uh, go through my emails, see if anything blew up overnight. Uh, then I start trolling the uh, internets for whatever the most interesting thing is. See what the trends are. Um, buy a whole bunch of stuff. Um, adjust prices, write copy, it's, uh, it's kind of heads down stuff. It's not terribly interesting. People think that it's a whole lot of fun to work here at ThinkGeek, but it's a real, real, uh, just a lot of work. All right, do you have any cool, neat products coming out on the, on the rise kind of a thing? Anything you can show us? Uh, I'm working on a couple of things right now. Uh, I'm working with a company to make these Klein bottles, which is uh, basically an Erlenmeyer flask that they've twisted into a sort of a three-dimensional Mobius strip. It's a non-volumetric object, meaning it, uh, the inside is the outside is the inside. Um, so mathematically speaking, it has no internal volume. Um, so we're trying to get those made. Um, I'm working with another manufacturer to, uh, to have some uh, inexpensive monocular um, night vision goggles. So we'll have those out, I think, in a couple of months. Um, what else do I have? Oh yeah, here's a live scribe pen. Have you seen these things? These are very, very cool. So I've been using that actually today as I started playing with that. Um, all kinds of toys. Yeah, they're all sort of surrounding me at this point. <laughs> so as, as a buyer, uh, where do you get all this awesome stuff? Where do you find it? Uh, how do you get your hands on it? Do you make your, it all yourself or do you get it ordered? Is it some kind of a fusion between those two things? A lot of the stuff we'll buy from another manufacturer and the advantage there is that we don't have to buy an entire production line's worth. You know, typical production lines like 5,000, 10,000 units or something, that costs a lot of money, especially on something we've never tried before. So when a manufacturer comes out with, uh, say, a, um, oh, I don't know, a portable hard drive that we think is really cool, we don't have to buy their whole production room. We can just buy a little bit of it, try it out. That works out well. Maybe we'll talk to them about doing a, a, a something special just for us. 
or if we have our, our own idea, we have a merchant who's solely responsible for uh, making our own custom stuff. And we deal with a couple of manufacturers in China who uh, put this stuff together, slap a Think Geek label on it, ship it out. So the any items that are like your biggest sellers ever, most popular things, things that you're known for specifically? Probably the best seller of all time uh, would have to be our um, Force FX lightsabers. Oops, it, this one is an old one, I guess the, here we go. You smack it and it sounds like you're smacking another lightsaber. But these sell, or at least they sold like crazy. Um, Hasbro picked them up now and they've gone quite mainstream, but for a while there was a couple of Christmases where you could only get them here. And we've just sort of become known as the place to get lightsabers. That's, and they still sell. It's a pretty awesome title. <laughs> yeah, the place to get lightsabers. Think you the place to get lightsabers. That's cool.